Welcome to another lecture. Today we're going to discuss about brachial plexus. This is one of the most commonly asked questions in any examination you give at this level and something that a lot of students find difficult to understand. Therefore, it's really, really important that you have a good grasp of it and you understand how brachial plexus um, is organized. So the brachial plexus is basically made up from the ventral rami of C5 to T1 spinal nerves. So the uh, spinal nerves, basically, they, uh, the spinal cord is going to end in the anterior and the posterior or the ventral or the dorsal rami um, in the forms of the nerve roots. So the lower cervical C5 to 8 and thoracic, the first thoracic, makes the brachial plexus. Okay. Then after the roots come the trunks. So C5 and C6, they combine to form the upper trunk. C7 forms the middle trunk and C8 and T1 form the lower trunk. Okay, So C7 is the middle trunk, C8 and T1 are the lower trunks and C5 and C6 are the upper trunks. So that's trunks after roots. Now the next thing is divisions so each of these trunks gives off two branch two two divisions so there's a anterior division and a posterior division from each of the upper middle and lower trunks okay so these are the divisions the upper middle and the lower uh, give off the anterior and the posterior and then the brachial plexus is all situated around the on the surface of the clavicle and the axilla. Therefore, any injuries in these areas can injure the brachial plexus and can injure any of these things. Okay, So divisions are very, very important uh, because divisions then divide further and form the cords and the branches as we'll have a look now. So it's really important to understand which divisions make which cords. Okay? So, roots, trunks, divisions, and now the cords. Okay. So the cords are easy to understand. So first we're going to look at the C567. Uh, so the upper and middle trunks, anterior divisions, they form one cord. Then the posterior divisions of all three, so the upper, middle, and lower trunk, they form one cord. And the lower trunk, just the anterior division, that's the only one left now. So that forms another cord. Okay. So let's have a look what are the cords that are formed. So the anterior division of the upper and middle form the lateral cord. Okay. So lateral cord is anterior division of the upper and middle. The posterior is very easy to remember. So the posterior cord is from all the posterior divisions from the upper, middle, and lower trunk. So that's a posterior cord. And then the medial cord is from the anterior division of the lower trunk. Okay. So lateral cord, anterior division, posterior cord, all the three posteriors, and then the medial cord from the anterior division of the lower. Okay. The last thing that's left are the branches. The easy way to remember is remember the mnemonic MARMU, M-A-R-M-U. Now these are the major branches of the brachial plexus or the final nerves that are formed. So roots, trunk, division, cords, and branches. Okay, so M is for muscular cutaneous, A is for axillary, R is for radial, M is for median, and U is for ulnar nerve. Okay, so these are the branches which are formed from the brachial plexus. It is the major branches of the brachial plexus. Just going to have a look how the cords are related to each of these branches. Okay. So the muscular cutaneous is primarily from the lateral cord. Okay. So that's very, very important to understand how the cords are arranged and how these translate finally into the branches. Okay. So the lateral cord. Um, it gives out 
in the musculocutaneous branch. Similarly, the medial cord gives out the ulnar nerve branch. Okay. Um, now, the axillary radial and median are a little bit complex because they are formed from two parts. All right. So the posterior cord is gives rise to the axillary and the radial nerve, which is pretty simple. The median nerve has two inputs from the cord, the so lateral and the medial cord. Okay, they both give rise to the median nerve. So musculocutaneous, axillary, radial, and ulnar nerve are from one each, so lateral, medial, and posterior. Whereas the median nerve is the only unique one in that it gets uh, it it is formed by a combination of lateral and the medial cord. Okay. So this is the primary juncture of the brachial plexus. I'm just going to have a look at some of the minor branches. So the roots give up as dorsal scapular nerve. And then some of the other minor branches that come with the brachial plexus, it's good to know, uh, but it's not necessary to remember all of these, okay? The root trunk divisions, cord branches, these are the only things that you need to remember. However, uh, this is just for documentation and just theoretical basis that you just need to remember a little bit of these as well. So the long thoracic nerve of Bell um, is also one of the branches from the roots. Uh, dorsal scapula only comes from the C5, whereas the long thoracic nerve is formed from the C5, C6, C7 nerve roots. Okay. So similarly with the roots, you get some of the branches from the trunks and the cords. Um, now, if you look at the trunks, it's mainly the upper trunk that gives rise to nerve to subclavius. That's number one. So nerve to subclavius from the upper trunk. And the second one is a suprascapular nerve. Okay. So two branches from the roots that you need to remember, two branches from the trunks, from the upper trunk that you need to remember. Dorsal scapular from C5, long thrusting nerve from C5, C6, C7, and the trunks, upper trunk, nerve to subclavius, and suprascapular nerve. Alrighty. Um, now, moving forward, some of the other minor branches you need to remember is um, the lateral pectoral nerve, which arises from the lateral cord. So that's a minor branch which basically supplies the pector pectoral muscles, the chest muscles. So that's lateral pectoral nerve from the lateral cord. And now similarly from the medial cord, you, you get some minor branches. Uh, medial cord is actually the one which gives the maximum number of minor branches. So like lateral pectoral nerve from the lateral cord, you get similar um, branch from the medial cord, which is called the medial pectoral nerve. And then there are other minor branches like the medial, medial branch, brachial cutaneous nerve and the medial anti-brachial cutaneous nerve. Um, you, you'll, you'll find in some of the books, these, these are kind of mentioned as the medial nerve of the arm, medial cutaneous nerve of the arm and medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm. Okay. So easy way to remember brachial plexus. I've tried to simplify it as much as possible, but do leave in your comments and any improvements that we could do for further videos to make them better. Okay. So brachial plexus, remember roots, trunks, divisions, cords, and branches. Easy way to remember this mnemonic is remember, remember to drink cold beer. So R T D C B. So roots, trunks, divisions, cords, and branches. And the, another mnemonic to remember is the MAMU, musculocutaneous, axillary, radial, median, and ulna. So keep this picture in mind. Pause this video. Go through this video again if you want to. But if you can remember this much of the brachial plexus rather than going in any further detail, this is all you need. Okay, so root C5 to T1 from the upper, middle and lower trunks each gives off two divisions. They form the lateral posterior and the medial cord and they give five main branches and some minor branches. Thank you for watching. Please like and share. Subscribe to our channel. 
and watch the next video. Also comment on the videos that you like and share amongst your friends. Also please do visit at navmanvideos.com for detailed lectures and more notes. Thank you. Please keep coming back.